Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, which is 10 a.m. in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. Uh, do remember though, if you miss the live streams, you can always catch the premiere event streams, which are on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the United States which is 7 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Uh, we're going to continue working on our Art Deco building cinematic that we're creating in the Unreal Engine 4. Um, yes, yeah, so we're creating a cinematic where we fly through an environment, fly through a building, and then back out again. And we're at the stage now where we're inside the building setting up our cameras in there. We've already done the most of the environment camera work. Now we're inside the building and uh, we're just going to do a couple of external shots at the back of the building uh, to finish off the cinematic. So once all the shots are actually ready, like we've been saving them out. Hey, Beck, Expect Station, how are you? Good to see you, Beck. I hope you've been well. Um, yeah, so we're just going to create a couple of um, <laughs> the plan of action is we're, we're, make, we're doing our camera shots in, in Unreal. We're saving them out as sh shot tracks. Um, I'm compositing those uh, images into an MP4 file, a, a high bandwidth MP4 file that we're then going to take into Adobe Premiere to put our final cinematic together. Uh, now, don't think you need to do it in an external program. You can do it all within Sequencer inside of Unreal if you want. Um, but I prefer to use Premiere simply because I'm more familiar with Premiere. And I think, I don't think you can actually export a movie file from Sequencer with audio. I don't think that Epic have included that yet. I could be wrong, um, but we're going to use Premiere because I want to lay down a couple of um, sound effects tracks as well as a music track to go along with our cinematic. So we'll do that in Adobe Premiere Pro. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. So if we jump straight into it, and jump into Unreal. Uh, yesterday we were working on this camera here, which is the close-up of that um, multi-arm statue. So if I just scrub through my timeline here, it's just a very simple camera shot where we pan up the statue to look at the uh, wall on the opposite side. And that was the last shot we got up to. So remember I'm doing three camera shots per room, uh, anything more, and I'm just going to have way too much footage for our four and a half minute cinematic um, so that's the plan of action. <laughs> Remember, uh, two. It's a cool shot. Thanks, Beck. I'm glad you like it. I, th I just thought it was a, something a little bit different from the other shots we've been doing. Um, yeah, just a straight, straight shot. Very simple, panning straight up uh, with a statue on the right hand side, and then we can get a good view of the of the wall on the opposite side. There, we do have a shot previous to this one, which is this one here, uh, where we get a, a better overview of the actual statue itself. So if I turn this shot track on, and we pan through our timeline, uh, this is where we actually enter the room. So we get a good, good shot of the statue as we enter the actual room. So I thought a shot of the statue, uh, side view of the statue was just made a bit made the room look a bit more interesting made the statue look a bit more interesting um beck says did you manage to get the staircase one sorted i didn't manage to see the end of the result oh yes i did actually let's let's do that let's have a look at the shots we did last week so i'll just minimize um unreal and i'll jump into my shot folder and we can check out the shots we work we were working on last week and I'll just get rid of these windows. A lot of you might be thinking, how, why, <laughs> why do you keep opening up all these different windows? Uh, by default, no normally when you open up a window, it replaces the one that you previously had. But I turn that off in Microsoft in Windows because I like to keep separate folders open at a time. So <laughs> just for those people curious as to why I keep hoping I have multiple windows open, it's because I turn off that feature in Windows where it just replaces the window, the current folder with the new one you open up. So shots, yes. Uh, we got up to shot 44, I believe, or was it 43? Just let me check, I can't remember. 43, that was the one where we actually start to enter the stairwell. 
So that will be the first shop people will see as it go as we enter the um, centre of the building here. I'll just let it play twice so you guys can get a good look at it. Guys and girls. When I say guys, I mean guys and girls. Everybody's guys to me. <laughs> Not meaning that in a sexist way. I just mean that's just how I refer to it, both sexes. Uh, so, yeah, that's the first shop we see when we enter the building. Sniper Echo. Hey, buddy. How are you? I didn't think you were going to be here today. It's good to see you. I'm glad you are here. But, um, yeah, I, th I thought you were going to be gone. What are you doing there, Sniper Echo? What are you trying to tell me in chat? And um, this is just for Beck's benefit and anyone else that didn't see the stream yesterday. I'm just going through the cameras we did last week. Uh, this is the one where we pan up to the second level and catch the bottom of the chandelier. You made it. You're just back. Oh, good to hear, Sniper Echo. It wouldn't have been the same if you weren't here. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Sniper Echo is a mod on my channel. Um, but Sniper Echo was one of the first people to ever watch me stream when I started on Twitch. So he he is my longest viewer. Uh, I'm doing good. Yep, I'm doing very well. Thanks, Sniper Echo, for asking. Yep, everything is good. Very good. I'm very, yep, everything's great. And uh, I'm, I want to play one of those games shortly, actually, that um, you very graciously gifted me. It was very nice of you, Sniper Echo. Thanks again for that. And I am planning on doing that very soon because all my workloads caught up with. You know, the studio took half my workload away because I, uh, they were afraid that I was going to fall apart. Uh, and, I pro and I did fall apart, actually, because uh, I got sick for that week. So I've got a bit of free time. Not a lot, but a little bit. Enough to play some games anyway. Because that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, I love playing video games. So I just don't get the time, as much time as I used to. Uh, this is that shot we were talking about back where we um, we brought the camera through the uh, through the plants that overhang the entryway so we could get a good overview shot of the stairwell as we pl pass through our plants. Now this is similar to the outside shot, but with the outside shot, I'm, I kept focus on the on the. Uh, the tree leaves in the foreground before I moved it to the background. This one I do it the opposite way. I keep uh, depth of field on the background and the foreground is slightly out of focus. So, Chill time is important. That's exactly right, Sniper Echo. Chill time is important. It really, 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 really is. Um, you know, it's one thing to be driven and to want to work 24-7, but um, you just end up making yourself sick. <laughs> just look at me. Um, yeah, so chill time is incredibly important and there's no better way to chill than to play a video game or watch a movie or read a book. Reading a book can be good too. I don't do that as much as I should. I am, I'm, they do look great and uh, I did a lot of research online before I uh, told you which two, uh, before I made suggestions to you what I would have liked to play um, and they both reviewed incredibly well. So, um, yeah. I'm looking forward to playing both of them. Uh, Xpex says, turns out pretty good. Leaves were always an issue in this one, though. Yeah, they were. And again, remember, this is a very long shot, and we're going to be editing these shots to the tempo of the music of the soundtrack. So uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing with a lot of these shots is they're not going to play through in their entirety as we see them now. I'm going to be cutting them. So I might cut it here and then pick it up here, and then cut it here, you know what I mean? So we'll, we'll, we'll pick the best bits of all of our shots to put together for our final cinematic. They won't be the full length that we're seeing at the moment. The, this is the, the raw footage that we'll cut back, which is why, again, I'm making every shot at least 10 to 15 seconds in length, uh, which is really long for a shot, but I, I know I'm going to be cutting them back. That's why I'm making them longer than I need. And the final one we did from last week was... This one. And this is the one where we're actually upstairs now. So yeah, so I, I I get what you're saying, Beck, about the leaves being an issue sometimes. Um, but we'll cut it to to the best bits of each of these um shots. Sniper says, uh, Phil, I'm also sorry to hear about the NVIDIA. <laughs> 
What do you mean you're sorry to hear about the NVIDIA reward sniper echo? Are you being cheeky? Or, or do you know something that I don't? <laughs> Tell me. You got me worried now. Uh, yeah, it's just for anyone that doesn't know, um, unless Epic have changed their mind. Turns out having a kitchen and toilet is a must. Oh, you get a fill slap. You are so cheeky, Sniper Echo. You get a fill slap. Fill slap for you. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, uh, I was, NVIDIA and uh, Epic Games very graciously awarded me um, uh, a, a place in the um, NVIDIA Edge program for August 2018, so just the last NVIDIA Edge program for anyone that doesn't know. If you make something really cool using Unreal, uh, you have a chance to win, to be selected in the Edge program and to win a GTX 1080 Ti. And uh, thankfully, um, Epic liked what I was doing here and NVIDIA made it uh, as well. So they awarded me um, a, a GTX 1080 Ti yesterday. So that's very cool. And I'm very grateful to both uh, Epic Games and NVIDIA for, for running that program and and for choosing the house on the hollow here, the project we're working on as part of that. It's incredibly cool. And I'm very grateful to both Epic and NVIDIA. Uh, Sniper says, don't know who told them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I told you guys, I'm quite happy to make a kitchen and a bathroom for you if you want to wait another six months for the project to be finished. But I thought you guys wanted me to get on to, you know, doing some photogrammetry stuff and making a new model. I know I've had people pop in saying, you're still working on this? How long has this been going now? And it has been a very long project and you guys and girls have been incredibly patient sitting through here watching it while I've been making it. Uh, but we're at the, very, at the pointy end of this now, so it's almost almost finished. So, <laughs> Unless you want a kitchen and bathroom, in which case we're going to be here for another six months. Uh, I, I do want to point out too, don't think that uh, if you make something in Unreal, it's going to take you as long as it's taken me. The only reason it's taken me this long is because uh, I, I can only work on the project four hours a week, which is when I stream. Uh, I don't have time to work on it uh, any other times because of stuff with the studio. So that's why it's taken me so long because I can only, only, only devote four hours a week to the project. I'd like to do more, but uh, I can't at the moment. Uh, Beck says, uh, I got an email about being part of an event with uh, CG Trader today, but NVIDIA is a whole different level. <laughs> See, good God, Phil. Uh, CG Trader, I'm familiar with them. Um, I don't have a store on CG Trader. I do. Uh, let me let me rephrase this. I do have a store on CG Trader, but I've never put any models online there. Um, but I have an account and I have a store there with nothing in it. So don't go looking for my models on CG Trader. Um you can buy them on Creative Market and also on my own store on my own website, which if you want to buy one of my models, guys, that's the best place to do it from because it's cheapest. Uh, there's a 30% premium if you buy my stuff through Creative Market because that's how much commission Creative Market take when they when they sell my stuff. So I, I removed that from my model price on my own website, billdoes3d.com. Uh, so you, the cheapest place to buy my stuff is on my website through my store, uh, billdoes3d.com. And remember too, if you're a sub to my channel, you get 50% discount on any model you or all models you want to buy through my my store. So, just putting that out there, no pressure. I just wanted to to point that out to you guys. Though, if you did want to buy any of my model, you're better doing it through my store because it's the cheapest. Uh, Sniper says, "True, six months is a bit much to push the date of this FPS game back." That's right. We we got to get this game out the door, Sniper Echo. You know, it's funny you say that. Actually, um. I posted to um, I, that that uh, the award that I got from Nvidia and uh, Epic Games for the House in the Hollow was the entry hallway, the very first section of this building. And I posted that it's about a thirty second video. Uh, I have it on YouTube in four K. If you want to watch it, there go to my YouTube channel. You can find the links uh, below my stream. Um, I posted that to uh, the uh, Unreal Discord channel for. Australia, and uh, I had some people asking me if I was if it was going to be if, if it was a game and if I was making it into a game. I thought that was that was pretty funny. Uh, it's actually not a game; it's a cinematic for anyone that doesn't know. And Sniper Echo is just being cheeky. Um, it's not a game; it's a cinematic. But I've had people in my chat, like I know, um, Hambone said it, it would be an instant buy for him, which was very. I'm very flattered by that. 
I have no plans to turn it into a game, but you never know. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see how much time I get. Uh, but not. this project is a cinematic. We may revisit it if I want to turn it into a game, but at this stage, just a cinematic. You'd like to see an alpha soon, Sniper Echo. Uh, Xpec says, shameless personal advertising. I know, I know. Don't you hate it when streamers go on a ramble about, you know, sub to me, follow me, follow my Twitter, buy my stuff. <laughs> I try not to do that. Uh, I find it a bit annoying when I see streamers doing that. I, I know why they do it. I mean, you know, they, they want to earn a living, but, yeah, I don't – I find it annoying. <laughs> so I try and do it as le least amount as I can. Uh, but I have found, though, you know, if I don't tell people, if you enjoy the stream, please follow me, they don't. But as soon as you say it, they do. Uh, so I'm, you've got to remind people. A call to action, they call it, in the ad business. You've got to give them a call to action. Uh, Sniper says, don't forget to shoot a link. Yeah, do shoot a link, um, expect. So you're, um, what, what, maybe you can't talk about it, but what's the event that CG Trader are talking about? Maybe you don't want to talk about it, in which case it's completely fine. But if you want to talk about it, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> uh, it, Beck says, I was talking about Phil telling us where to buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sniper says, uh, what, not a game? When did this happen? Yeah, no. Uh, and Sniper says, and when did the project name change? In search of amenities was a better title. <laughs> the never-ending search for the toilet. Yeah, let's call it that. Let's call the game the never-ending search for the toilet or amenities. Uh, Beck says, uh, Sniper says to Beck, uh, you're a little slow. <laughs> Join the club, Sniper Echo. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little slow all the time, so... All right, let's create a new shot. We finished on that uh, statue yesterday, so let's create a new empty shot track. So we're up to shot. Wow, we're up to shot fifty. Can you believe that, guys? Shot fifty. We're nearly there, though. We're, we're over halfway through the building now. So, so let's duplicate this, and we're going to call it shot fifty. And let's open that blank shot track up, so we've got a clean slate to work with. Okay, uh, again, just as for, as far as workflow goes in Unreal, when I create a cinematic, this is a preferred uh, workflow that Epic Games suggests on their website, where on the left-hand side you've got the cinematic view and on the right-hand side you have your perspective view. I find this is the easiest way to work. I know a lot of people will just work in cinematic view, um, but you can run into problems doing that because you can end up moving a camera by mistake. Android Lust, good to see you, buddy. How are you? And there's Android Lust saying hello and showing the Fildo love. It's good to see you, Android Lust. Shot 50, yeah, I know, we're up to shot 50. Can you believe that? Shot 50. We've got four and a half minutes of the audio that we've got to, we've got to have to condense all these shots into, so it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. You guys are going to have to ch help me choose the bits of the shots that you like the best because we're going to have to cut the shots up. They're too long. Um, Beck says the CG Trader thing is apparently a modeling partnership for creating and being paid for kits of furniture and home decor models. Oh, cool. That sounds very cool. Um, yeah, that sounds incredibly cool. And that's a good idea, actually, putting together kits for people because let's talk decor and furniture. If, if, you're make, if you're wanting to furnish a room that you're making in 3D, you want all your furniture to coordinate with each other so it looks like it, it belongs together. Uh, so putting together a kit of different pieces of furniture that, that are all styled in the same manner is a great idea. You know, you, if you guys remember when I was texturing up um, the furniture for this building, we stuck to the same uh, coloured wood for nearly all of the furniture simply because it's the best way to get it to all match together properly. So yeah, I can see I can see how that could be a real benefit. And that sounds incredibly cool, um Beck. Sniper says no way I've sat here watching you set up fifty shots. I think you have. <laughs> I think I think people have been watching me. That's you you guys have watched me set up fifty shots. This is the fiftieth shot. Uh Andrew Lust says, Oh crap, I realised I missed yesterday's stream. You did, but you know you can always um jump into the video section if you really want to and you can watch it back because it's uh, all of my videos are archived. Don't, don't feel bad, Android Lust. It's good you're here now. Like I said, better late than never. 
You thought today was Monday, Android Lost? No, today's not Monday. <laughs> You're getting as bad as me. I, I can never remember what day it is half the, half the time. Uh, when I work, because I, you guys know I work from home a lot, when you work from home, you don't tend to pay attention to what day it is or even what the date is. So I'm always having to, uh, to double check what day it is and what date it is. Monday in America, yeah, again, I don't talk about times very much. Like, all I say to you guys is my schedule doesn't change. I'm on every Monday and Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States is when I'm live. But in Australia, it's actually Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, I and I don't mention that because it starts to confuse people. If they think it's Monday and Tuesday and then I say it's Tuesday and Wednesday because that's what time it is for me. Uh so I ignore Australia and, and the UK and Europe, my apologies, UK, Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, and I just tell you guys in UK, in US time, so just to make it easy. There's a countdown for you to, to remind you and you can always follow my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D, shameless plug, uh, because I always post when I go live. So we need a reminder that way. <laughs> but it's cool. You're here now, Android Lust. That's what's important. Uh, Beck says, really annoyed that I have to take down my setup for moving our apartment this weekend. Oh, no. Well, I've said it before, and you guys know that that week that I was, um, the week actually before I, when I had to get the glasses made up, I couldn't do any work because I couldn't see the screen. And I was climbing the walls, not being able to use my computers. I, I didn't realize just how uh, addicted to using my PC I had become. It was insane. Insane. Couldn't use my mobile phone because I couldn't read it. Couldn't use my computers because I couldn't read the screen. Um, yeah, it was it was not fun, not fun at all. So I, I feel for you, Beck, having to dismantle dismantle your your machine, and move apart. It, just the fact of move, just moving is a, a nightmare. Having to pack everything up and move it and then unpack it. Wow, an absolute nightmare. Um, Android Lust says to Beck, I, I hate taking down and putting up the setup, so many of us don't know why. Um, Android Lust, do do, you know, I read that one. <laughs> I can't read much out. Uh, Beck says, and in true British fashion, I spilt tea all over my keyboard this morning. Oh, no. I've spilled coffee in my last uh, laptop. You guys remember, I, I think I mentioned it on stream once before. I spilled an entire cup of coffee, and when I have coffee, you guys know I love my coffee. I have a big cup of coffee. Where are we? <laughs> uh, the whole thing went in my in my laptop's keyboard. Uh, the laptop lasted for two years after that, but it died about how long ago? About four months ago, probably five months ago. So it kept going. Mind you, the keyboard didn't work, so I had to plug in an external keyboard when I wanted to use my notebook. But at least the notebook turned on and ran uh, up until about four or five months ago when it completely died. So, yeah, no, I feel for you. I've, I've spilt um, numer numerous liquids all over my keyboards. What can you do? You've got, to be, you've got to have beverages when you're sitting at your PC. You need that beverage and those snacks. It's no fun sitting there without the snacks. Now, I'm just trying to work out uh, a good camera view for the... Next camera, a good camera sort of setup. Uh, Beck says, caps lock just doesn't work now, so rest in peace. <laughs> oh, well. We can, we, you can do without a caps lock. Just hold down um, the shift key. Isn't that for the caps lock? If you don't have a caps lock. Uh, Sniper says, friend got a keyboard that he could, he could wash. You can get keyboards, actually, that can... With stand liquids. Uh, got a keyboard he could wash, but just put it under the tap whenever he spilled stuff on it. Yeah, you can get those sort of keyboards. It was awesome. Yeah, that is a thing, Beck. There certainly is a thing. These keyboards that are uh, liquid proof. Um, I haven't come across a mechanical one, though. And I'm a big fan of mechanical keyboards because I really like the feel of the keys on a mechanical keyboard. I use brown switches because they're not too loud for streaming. Uh, blue switches and red switches are cool, but when you stream, you get that click, 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 and it can become annoying for people. So uh, I, I use browns. But, yeah, if I could find a um, waterproof mechanical keyboard, that would be 
incredibly cool. I haven't come across one yet. Um, 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 you need one, Beck, and Sniper says, yeah, like take it outside and hit it with a hose even, yeah. Yep, they're very cool, those uh, waterproof, why did that happen? <laughs> waterproof keyboards, there we go. That purge was from um, my chat client here. I got no idea why it does that. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to come up with an interesting camera angle. Uh, and I want to sort of, we haven't got a shot of the bay window, and I think that would be cool. Uh, Android Lust says a waterproof mechanical keyboard would be an instant buy for me. For me as well. If I could come across a, me a, a mechanical waterproof keyboard, because most of the ones that I've seen are membrane keyboards, so they're not um, mechanical. And I love my mechanical keyboard. I wouldn't give up my ducky keyboard for for anything. Love it. Love it. Love it. I love my ducky. Uh, Sniper says his was mechanical. You do get the brand name. I'd like to. Um, I'm curious because I've never come across a mechanical that's waterproof. I, like I said, I've seen membrane ones that are, but not a mechanical. Because I can't give up my mechanical keyboard. I just I can't do it. And not having to worry about spilling coffee all over my keyboard would be wonderful. So yes, we want to get a shot of this um, bay window. Because we put a bit of work into creating it and draping our fabric over it and all the rest of it, so we want to show it all. I'm just trying to work out how what sort of camera shot I want here. Uh, Beck says, post brand name, everyone in stream buys one. <laughs> if you do come across a sniper, remember you have you can post links in Twitch chat. So, But do remember, guys and girls, unless you're a sub, don't post links in Twitch chat. But everyone can post links on Discord. Another shameless plug here. Uh, join the Phil Dust 3D Discord server. If you want to show your work off, there's a gallery section. And everyone is free to post a link there. Sniper says, uh, better get an affiliate link first. <laughs> that is cheeky. He, he, he deserves a Phil slap for that. He, that's two Phil slaps for Sniper Echo in the space of 15 minutes. How about that? Got to be a record. No, actually, probably equal to leg mog. They both got slaps in 15 minutes, multiple slaps in 15 minutes. Um, affiliate link, yeah. Sniper wants to make some money. Um, how are we going to do this? How am I going to set this shot up? We have a shot where we enter the room and the camera turns. We have a shot where we pan straight up looking across the room. Uh, so a shot, I think, where we, I, I like to give, uh, to do a variety of shots. So not every shot is flying through the environment like God of War, uh, or not every shot is just moving up or down. Uh, so, but, so I try to vary it up. Uh, so we don't have a shot where we actually move sort of like across the room. And that could be an interesting sort of thing to do with this bay window. Um, I, I really would like to get this uh, chest in shot as well, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to, really. Because we can either get a shot where we're looking back, which is interesting. There's a lot more interest in the room this way than sort of staring at the chest. Um, but we did put a lot of work into texturing up our assets, so if I can show things like the pieces of furniture, I'd like to. Let's see, can we get into an angle where we can see the chest and the rest of the room without it looking too weird? Not really. Not really. Okay, can we turn our camera maybe? We could do a slow turn. It might be interesting. We haven't done a shot like that. Um, my, my initial idea for this, though, I think, was to to sort of start low and pan our camera across up to our bay window sort of thing. It's hard to do with the mouse, but when I set it up with the camera, it would be much more easy, but sort of pan it up on an angle from like that down to the corner. Beck says, Nightbot seriously taking charge of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> Nightbot, I have, 
I have played with those timers in Nightbot. You you have no idea how many times trying to get it to be less spammy. Um, but you can see what it'll do. It we can go chatting for like lines and lines and lines. You can't see because my mouse is off the screen. We the, we can go lines and lines through the chat without Nightbot spamming a link, and then it will spam a link to my stuff like three or four times in a row. It's it's got a mind of its own. That bot it really has. <laughs> I've complained about Nightbot before I told you. It has a mind of its own. It really, really does. Um, yeah, so while I'd like to get uh, this chest of drawers, this this sideboard in shot, I really don't think there's much of... Actually, maybe we can do it with the next shot because the next shot is we're, is we're going to be leaving this room. So that, that might be cool, actually. We might do that where we sort of turn and then we move out back into the dining room. Let, let's Let's... Say we'll do it that way. Slaps Nightbot, that's right. Uh, so let's let's do a shot where we sort of, um, we start low. Camera sort of moves toward the bay window. And we sort of start up. And we finish up around about here. Let's do that. Let's do that. So first thing we need to do is we need to pull in a cinematic camera. Let's pull it in. Uh, um, and I'm not going to use a track for this because I'm only going to probably move the uh, camera in one axis and do a rotation on the camera itself. So no no, no rig, I don't think, is needed. But let's add that uh, camera to our sequence, our shot track. And let's turn it on so we can see what it's looking at in our cinematic viewport here. Uh, Beck says, is that carpet a plan or like a texture on the main floor? It's a plane. <laughs> yes, Beck, um, this, this carpet, this rug that you see running down the, the runner running down the hallway is a separate, um, mesh that has a bit of a, a fold and a kink put into it. Just so it's, it's not a completely flat plane. It does have a little bit of, um, it was turned into a cloth mesh in Max dropped to the ground, so it, it created a couple of wrinkles and creases here and there, and then I brought that into Unreal. So, it, yeah, it's, it's a plane, but not completely flat plane. It has some um, some creases and stuff in it where the carpet's been kicked up sort of thing. Just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And then, yeah, so it's just a plane texture. A plane that has been textured and placed on top of a uh, wooden floor, which was textured in Substance Painter, not not the carpet, the uh, the wooden floor. Yeah, so it's a good way if you want to. Um, I, I do that with all of my rugs and stuff that I put in, that I put in this building. I do it when I do uh, Archbiz stuff as well because I don't want to make stuff. To, things can look really fake if they're too perfect, and I've said this to you guys before. Make sure stuff is not too clean. If it's too clean, it looks too fake because nothing in the real world is ever one hundred percent clean like you get in a three D. So I always dirty my stuff up and uh, I always add little details like things like rugs. I always put a couple of uh, a couple of creases and stuff in them to make them look more realistic. And, and I do that with my Archbiz stuff as well, not just this level. The texture doesn't look like a plane to you, Tanaka Echo. What do you mean? Well, the rug is sort of kicked up in this corner here, but it is a plane. It's just a plane. And that's just one texture for the rug. And it's an old rug too, so the texture is uh, quite um, beaten up and damaged. The rug is actually quite old. You can sort of see it's worn out in parts and stuff. And I did that because we're working in an old building, so we'd have an old rug. Uh, Beck says, too often you can see these perfect square rugs. They're even sometimes in big games, quite odd and funny to see. It is, yeah. Yeah. The, you see, like you say, these big square rugs that are completely clean and crisp and really flat and it's really unnatural, really unnatural. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, maybe people are looking at their rug in their room and they're saying, well, my rug's completely straight and there's no wrinkles in it. That's fine. That can, they, you know, if, if, you, if you're diligent and you make sure that you um, position your rug every day after you've been walking on it and you'll have a completely flat rug. Most people don't do that, though. Um, 
and I find it looks more realistic if, if they're not that way. Because it just it doesn't look right. If you look in a game that has rugs that are completely straight and completely square, they just they don't look right. They look weird. You want to have your rugs look real and don't make them perfect. <laughs> and don't texture your stuff up to be too clean. Let's um let's rotate our camera because it's facing a wall and we don't want that. It's gonna turn angle snap on, I might turn it off, but there we go. Uh, Beck says, guess it depends on the environment. A house showcase can have them perfect, but not a house in a, a war zone. No, and most, and not a house either that people are living in because you're walking over it, it's going to get sort of, um, it's going to get bunched up. Just the, the act of walking over a rug will move the rug. And unless, like I said, unless you're diligent and every day you, you, you're pulling on your rug to make sure it's completely flat. It's going to be, it's going to catch in certain spots. It's going to lift in certain spots. It's just, yeah. So I, I always try and make mine not perfect, but I do that with everything, textures and stuff as well. Okay, let's get our camera into a position. Now, again, this on the left is what the camera is in, the cinematic viewport. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is change the, um, the sensor height to 18 so we get our letterbox look. I just really like this letterbox look. It, it gives the um, camera more of a cinematic feel. Okay. Uh... What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to move the camera and then I'm going to adjust the angles and stuff. So, so let's say our camera is here at this stage at the zero frame. Let's add keyframes by hitting S on the keyboard. That's our shortcut for keyframes. Let's move to the end of the timeline and let's move our camera. So I'm just going to get up into a position here that I can see my camera. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to move it up a little bit more. I'm going to rotate it here so that we're looking at the bay window. Let's move it up a bit more. I might move it back a little bit. Move it over. Because I quite like the look of these leaves and of the um, palm tree here in the corner. And I may actually, I won't. I want to catch the carpet here as well. Not the carpet, sorry, the um, the cloth we've got hanging over this seat here. So I don't want to move my camera up too high. I think I'm going to pull it down a little bit because I like the way the light, <laughs> the light catches the uh, fold in the fabric there. I may rotate the camera up. Just a little bit. Make sure I get it straight. We'll move it back down just a little bit. Maybe move it over just a little bit. Um, we have a couple of options. I can go low and go on a really high, a steep angle looking up, which means we'd see more of the windows in the background. We see more of these windows. Let, let's let's do that. If we don't like it, we can change it back. So I'm going to really angle the camera up here. Again, trying to make sure I get it straight. And we'll pull the camera down again. Again, because I want to make sure I keep those, those folds and shocks. Like, I like the light hitting them. So I don't want to lose that. Uh, I just pulled it 
angle the camera up because I think we needed to see a bit more of the window in the background. Um, we'll, we've lost a little bit of our uh, palm here in the corner. Which is a shame. I don't really think I can get it. I could pull it over a little bit maybe. I think probably around about here. I can still see my palm tree leaves a little bit in the corner. And I can see the wrought ironwork here as well because I like the way the, the light shines through the back of the wrought ironwork. And we keep our fold and we see a bit more of the window. So let's set a keyframe here. I'm just going to scrub back through my timeline and now we're going to start making some adjustments to see if, um, make some fine tunes. Fine tune it a little bit. Uh, I think at the start here the camera is a bit too low. So I'm going to move the camera up. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up until until just the top of this um, candelabra, the top of the candles are in shot. So let's uh, set new keys for our shot there. Let's scrub through our timeline again. So I'm just going to play this on a loop for a couple of times in the viewport while I have a copy. So at the end of our shop, we keep that cam the uh, the cloth fold in shop. We see a little bit of the uh, burn uh, the palm leaves on the side, and we see more of the window, which is good. So the whole point of this shot is really to to focus in on the bay window in relation to the rest of the room. Um, Beck is saying, "Is knowing 3D Studio Max and Maya important?" Or well, can I be okay knowing only one of them? I use 3D Studio Max for everything uh, and I don't know. I use 3D Studio Max for everything as well, Beck, so it has, it's suited me well over the years. I've never had a problem. Um, it, the more programs you know, the more employable you are. Like, because not every studio will use Max. Some will use Maya, some will use Blender, some will use uh, Cinema 4D. So knowing more than one 3D program is not a bad thing, but you know my advice to you guys has always been make sure you know one piece of 3D software really well before you start trying to learn another one. So, yeah, uh, I, I would I would not worry about knowing more than one unless you uh, unless you know that one incredibly well and then you can start learning a new one. Um. But not knowing either Max or Maya is not that important as long as you know at least one 3D piece of software. Like Blender is completely free. So use Blender. It's incredibly good if you don't want to spend any money on 3D. And then after you've learned Blender, you can maybe start learning another one like Max or Maya or Cinema 4D. But uh, no, knowing only one is completely fine. Most studios that I've worked in give you, give you a choice as to what you want to use. So... They have licenses for Maya, for Max, and they'll say to you, which one would you prefer to use? Uh, so you get a choice. Most studios are like that. It's rare these days to come across a studio that only uses one, but only gives you one choice um, because they want to make your life as easy as possible for you to create your work for them. So that's why they give you a choice usually as to which software you prefer to use. As long as it fits into their pipeline, you know. You can't go to a studio and say, well, uh, you know, I want to use some obscure 3D program that um, that not a lot of people are using because they, they, it won't fit in the pipeline for the studio. But Max, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, they're all pretty standard and um, and used in studios. So. Uh, Beck says, 3D Studio Max's price is madness, like 2000 a year, and they removed monthly payments. What do you mean they removed monthly payments? Do they not? 
do, do they not operate on subscription now? Again, you guys know um, a lot of the software I use here at home, the studio pay for because I work from home. So uh, I, I was not under the, I was not aware that Autodesk had stopped m- monthly subscriptions for Macs. Are you telling me that they're not doing that anymore? Because it's been a, a, quite a few months since I've been on Autodesk's website. Um, I know that the initial price to buy it was, was incredibly expensive, and that's why they moved into a subscription thing. Uh, Beck says, nope, it's per year now, no subscription. Seriously? What is going on at Autodesk? I'll have to ask them at work. Maybe they'll know. <laughs> I'll ask the purchasing manager at work because uh, they buy all the licenses and all the seats for the software. Um, that that I'm blown away by that. I didn't realise. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look on the Autodesk website actually after the stream, see what's going on. Because it, they it wasn't that long ago they started subscribe a subscription for for Max and Meyer and stuff where you can subscribe monthly to use it. So I'm blown away that they've um, done away with that. I wonder why. Because that seems to be the way every company is going now. Microsoft, uh, Adobe, giving you monthly subscriptions to their software. Wow, I did not know that, Beck. I will look at. I will look that up after the stream. I'm, I'm interested interested to see what's going on at Autodesk. Um, but I do want to remind you guys too, though, if you have a student email address or you're a teacher, you can um, get a free license for three years of Max or Maya from Autodesk, unless they've changed that as well. Um, they they give you a, a three year license as if you're a student to use it completely free. Um, but I'm going to check up on all of that after the stream because so I want to know what's going on. I, I did not know that, Beck. You've uh, blown me away with that. I'm going to have to check it out and see what, 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 what is going on at Autodesk. Okay, so we're finishing shot angle. is okay. Starting shot angle. It's okay. Yeah, and this is just a pan across the room with a, an angle toward the bay window. Uh, Beck says, uh, okay, I'll correct myself. So monthly is back. <laughs> was it when I checked a few months ago? And it's 216 a month or 1.7K a year. That's much more expensive than the last time I checked when it was subscription. Subscription. 216 a month seems quite a lot. Beck says, um... You can buy three years for four point six k. Wow! I know Max here. When you when you used to buy it outright, it, it used to cost about six thousand dollars, six k in Australia. That's Australian dollars, which is probably about probably about four and a half k in the US. Um, yeah. So to buy Max outright, it used to cost in Australia about six thousand um, dollars. I still I, I want to check out all of this website. I like I should go to their um. Their forum. I like to check out what people are posting in the forum in Autodesk as well. So I'll have a look. So I have an account with Autodesk. I'll check it all out. Um, but yeah, for three years is four point six k. Wow. Well, there you go, guys. Get yourself a, a student email address, um, and you can get a, a three year license free unless unless Autodesk would change that as well. Uh, Android Lust says it's two hundred and sixteen a month in euros. It says one hundred and ninety for me. Uh, Bex in pounds. Okay. Wow, pounds. That's that's incredibly expensive. Because if it's two hundred and sixteen pounds, um, that 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 would be like close to five hundred dollars in Australian dollars. With because our our dollars right down way down at the moment. So that's amazingly expensive. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to check it out after the stream. I want to see what they're charging and all this sort of stuff because that's that's incredibly expensive. I don't know what why they're doing that. Three hundred and ninety-five Australian dollars, Beck says. Wow. So close to four hundred bucks a month. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 All I can say is wow. Um. Wow, yeah. Uh, I haven't even installed the new version of Max yet, 2019. I'm still working in 2018 and 2016. 
I use 2016 for the stuff I sell online because I can save it to 2013 format. So I give people the option that want to buy my models of the Max format going all the way back to Max 2013. But even at the moment, I'm still using Max 2018. I haven't installed Max 2019 yet. I, I do have it. Um, the studio did give it to me, but I'm happy with 2018 at the moment. I could, they're not adding enough to justify that sort of price, not in my opinion. Um, I love Max, don't get me wrong. Max is my baby, and I wouldn't use anything else. But I, that, I don't see them adding enough every year to be justifying that sort of monthly cost. I, no, I don't see it. Autodesk, get your, <laughs> get your act together. If you want to start charging those sort of prices, you better start adding a lot more to the software every month as well, or at least every year when you bring out a new version. Android Lust says, wow, it would be two hundred and eighty-one fifteen in American money. Yeah, it's expensive, expensive. Beck says, 8.6K 8. for three years in Australian dollars. Wow. It used to be 6000 to buy it outright. So they're charging, they, they're making a $2,000 premium off Australian users by going to their subscription model. That sucks, sucks. See, businesses don't businesses can cop that cost because they write it all off. As a business, you write it off during tax. Um, so it's less of a, a problem for a business. But if you're if you're an independent um, contractor, like say you, you buy it because you do work for people, you don't work for a company, that's, that's starting to get really expensive, really expensive. Blender, guys, Blender is completely free and it's – just as good as uh, Max or Maya. Again, I don't use it. I can't talk to specifics. I know Sniper Echo uses it. I know Galen uses it. They both love it. I've seen people use it, and it looks in incredibly functional to me, and every piece of 3D software nowadays is pretty good. So uh, if you don't want to be spending that sort of money on Autodesk, then look at Blender because that, that sounds outrageous to me. Those prices are getting outrageous. It's, it's as bad as photogrammetry stuff. Some photogrammetry software is incredibly expensive. Um, one of the ones that I use is incredibly expensive. Again, I don't, I don't buy this software. The studio buys the license for it. So it's not an outlay that I have to worry about, um, which is the only reason I use it. I'm able to use it because the studio are the one paying for it. Um, but, yeah, some photogrammetry software, man, is it expensive. Uh, Beck says, yeah, it's not worth that price. Uh, my student version is licensed for seven years, though, so well, there you go. <laughs> You've got nothing to worry about, Beck. But do keep that in mind. Provided Autodesk have not changed anything, uh, you can get three years completely free student license from Autodesk of either Maya or Max or AutoCAD, a whole range of the software that, um, that uh, Autodesk create. They give you free licenses if you're a student for three years, so. It's a good deal. It's free. Can't get better than free. Um, Beck says Maya is the exact same price as 3D, 3D Studio Max 2. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Autodesk owning both of them, I'm sure they'd make the price of them both the same because it's sort of split 50-50 with a lot of studios with Max and Maya. Max is used in ArchViz a lot more. Maya is used in animation more. Most studios use both, though, so they're both – as equally as popular as the other, really. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, they're charging the same price for both of them. But I'm still blown away by that cost. That's that's a huge increase in the cost of Max. Um, Beck says, Maya Light is only £36. That's much nicer. Well, there you go, Maya Light. I'm not familiar with Maya Light, but then I don't use Maya either. Um, let's start making some changes to the depth of field here, I think. So we're going to start here. I'm going to turn on my uh, debug depth of field so I can see it in the viewport. You won't see anything because it's still pushed all the way back. Let's bring it all the way forward to 300. And you can see that purple haze. That shows me where the depth of field is within the scene. I'm going to bring it to 100. No, let's push it back to 500. Uh, so what this is telling me is, actually, let me just push it back a bit more, 1,200. There we go. It's easier to see. So that where that line is, that's where the depth of field will start to take effect. 
Um, so the foreground will be in focus and the background will be slightly out of focus. I might just pull it forward a little bit more. So let's try a thousand. I think that's better. Let's set a keyframe at a thousand. Uh, let's move along our timeline. Until we get to around about here. And let's see if we if we pull it uh, forward, whether that would be better. No, see, I don't want the cushions to be out of focus. So I know that my depth of field is too narrow. I've got to push it back. So let's go to uh, 800. That's not bad, but let's try 900. I don't want the window out of focus, so let's try 1,000. Let's push it back a little bit more. Let's go to 1100. And that's better. So the, the depth of field has been pushed back beyond the window. So let's set a keyframe there. Uh, and I'm also going to turn on smooth focus change. Uh, Beck says, uh, okay, so if I switch to Australian dollars on Autodesk, 3D Studio, 3DS is 5.7K for three years. Okay, so it's actually a bit cheaper now. Um, well, no, you used to be able to buy it for about 6K for an indefinite license. So this is before the subscription thing, though. Uh, back in the day where you could buy Max outright, it used to cost about 6000 Australian dollars, and once you bought it, you owned it forever. Um, so maybe now 5.7K for three years, because remember, as a, if you subscribe on their model, you can update it every year. So you're not stuck with the same version. You can always upgrade it which is one advantage of, of a subscription, I guess. So I, I guess in that way, it's a bit better of a deal. But you're never owning it, which I never like. That's the, the one thing I don't like about a subs being a subscription thing. You never actually own the software. So you're paying all this money for something. As soon as you stop paying your subscription, you can't use. <laughs> and that stinks. I'm sorry, but it stinks. Um, particularly if you're, like I said, if you're an independent contractor and you want to buy your software for, to use for clients, being able to buy it outright is much better, which algorithmic actually are great in that regard because they give you an indie license you can buy, which is reduced from the normal price, and it's it's not a subscription thing, I, I don't think, I don't, unless they've changed it as well. I know you can subscribe to algorithmic, but I think you can still buy it outright as well. Uh, Android Lust says, I see why Maya Lite is $30. It's missing nearly everything that's good for animation. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, as soon as, uh, as you may, as and as soon as I heard Maya Light, I thought, yeah, I wonder what they've taken out of it. And that's generally the case with a lot of those light progr light programs. Um, Eon View, they're, they're, they're bad for that as well. They, they have like six different versions of their software. And the basic version is incredibly basic and you can't do a lot with. The cheapest version, that is. So they're, they're bad for that as well. So I'm just checking the depth of field here as I move my camera. And that's fine. Everything's staying in focus. It should be in focus. Uh, and it, and now that I've turned up the um, draw distance for the depth of field, you can see the background is, is just a little out of focus. The foreground is, is sharp. But the background is just a little out of focus. And that's what I want. Um, Beck says, I'm just going over the Autodesk site in disbelief over their prices. <laughs> I'm going to check it out after the stream. I'm curious to see what... Autodesk are doing. Uh, I know that a lot of people that jump on their forum are not happy about what's been going on at Autodesk. Um, on the Autodesk forum, that is, when they've been talking about subscriptions. Um, I wonder if they've got a discount for students as well. Well, maybe not because you can get their stuff for free, I guess. I know um, Adobe, you can you can purchase their subscription if you're a student for, for much cheaper than the normal price. Like if you want Photoshop and After Effects and Premiere and all that sort of stuff. They give you a discount if you're a student. Uh, Android Lost says, My Light wouldn't be so bad for indie game devs though. I'm a bit curious about it. 
check it out if you uh, by all means. But do, don't dismiss the f- blender because it's completely free. You don't pay anything for it, um, and it's very good. Just because it's open source and free, I think it's open source. But just because it's free doesn't mean it's bad. I use OBS, as, which is um, open source broadcasting software now, which is what I use to, to stream to Twitch, even though I own a piece of software that I paid for that does broadcasting because I like OBS better. I think it's a better piece of software uh, and it's free. So don't think of any, because something is free, it's bad. It's not. <laughs> I just want to point that out because I don't want people thinking I've got to have to spend, you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars every year if I want to get into doing 3D because you don't. The program we're using right now, Unreal, it's completely free. Epic Games give it away. Now, if you want to make any money on it, all you do is you, you give them a small percentage of your sales, which is fair enough. But the software itself is completely free to use. You download it, you install it, you use it, it's free. You pay nothing. And it's an amazing piece of software. Um, I'm not saying that because of the award they've just given me. I'm saying it, I, I, I said it months and months ago when, when we started doing the project that it's, it's one of the nicest real-time engine pieces of software I have ever used. And I've used a few, trust me. Uh, because you guys know I've come from, I, I came from games development. I went into film where we don't use real time so much. Um, and now I'm in Archbiz, but uh, I've come from a games background and I'm telling you, I've used a few different pieces of, uh, a few different game engines. And from an artist's point of view, the Unreal Engine is the best I've used. It's just, it's a beautiful engine to use as an artist because they've given you all the tools you need to make what, whatever you, you can imagine. And it's free. So download it and play with Unreal. Use Blender. It's free if you want a 3D piece of software and you don't want to spend any money. Uh, Beck says, my uni were, were really nice and paid for us to have a whole Adobe suite. Well, that is, yeah, actually, the, the universities in this country do a, a, the same sort of thing, Beck. Um, the university buys the software or buys the licenses which and they allow the students to install the software on their home machines as part of the university's license. So, yeah, in this country, it's, it's the same sort of thing. Uh, students can get this, the software for free. The university pays for it, which, which is great because it means you can do your, your assignments when you're at home. Uh, yeah. Uh, Beck says, makes Autodesk look greedy when Epic Games give you E4 for free. Yeah, I agree. It does make them look incredibly greedy. Um. <sighs> As much as I love Macs, and I do love Macs, I, I can't imagine using another piece of 3D software. It doesn't mean I like the way Autodesk behave. Um, but then I don't like the way Google behave half the time either. So, you know, <laughs> you can't win with these companies. You really can't. They might make some great software, but they behave incredibly badly because they can. And they do because they can. You know, they, they don't have much competition, so they can do what they want. And that stinks. No company should be allowed to do whatever it wants. They should all be held accountable. But, uh, yeah, UE4 is free and it's incredibly generous of Epic Games to allow people to do that. Um, trust me, I know years gone by, the Epic Games software engine was expensive. They all were expensive. You know, we're talking in the millions of dollars. Now, I've signed NDA, so I can't get into details, but... It used to be incredibly expensive, and Epic give it away for free now, so. They give it away for free. You can't get better than free, and it's, it's very good of them to do that. Um, Android Lust says, yeah, Blender is perfectly fine. I've tried Blender before, Maya, and uh, sure, I would still use Blender until I have to use Maya or Max. Yeah, again, like, it is. Boycott Google, oh, yeah, I wish. Oh, don't get me started on the whole YouTube thing. I mean, Wow. Wow. You don't want to hear a tirade, tirade from Phil on the way that Google treats its YouTube um, users. No, we're talking, not talking about people watching YouTube so much. Even that's bad enough with the ads, but um, I'm talking more about if you have a YouTube channel and you upload stuff, the way they change monetization and all that sort of thing. Yeah, no, don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, I think this camera is okay. I'm just going to play it through in a loop a couple of times to double check. 
Uh, Beck says Unity isn't actually too bad. Unity, actually, yeah, Unity is another free game engine. Um, I think you pay a commission on sales on that, though, too, don't you, maybe? Uh, but more, a little more pricey, but still not at this level. Yeah, again, Unity is uh, a real-time game engine like Unreal is a real-time game engine. Um, and Unity and Blender go together incredibly well. Blender goes together with anything. It's 3D software. Uh, but, yeah, Unreal, real-time game engine, real-time engine. It's, also, it's moving away from game engine because it's being used in ArchBiz now, uh, UE4. And Unity is another real-time engine. So... I've not used Unity. I, I know some of some of the people that pop into my chat are big Unity users, and they love it. And I've seen games made using Unity, and they look great. So, yeah, my preference is um, is uh, UE is Unreal, though. Personal preference, because I'm I, I'm familiar with Unreal. I've used it before. Uh, Android Lost says, speaking of ads, YouTube ads seem to have gotten worse on mobile. It's always the same five ads, ads or so for me. Yeah, YouTube have just made an announcement not that long ago that they're going to start pushing a lot more ads, just like Twitch are, unfortunately. Um, unless you're a – it used to be if you were a Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime member, you didn't see ads on Twitch. They're changing that in, in, in about three days. After the 14th of September, even if you're an Amazon Prime or a Twitch Prime member, you're going to see advertising. The only time you're not going to see it is if you buy Twitch Turbo, which is an extra $9 a month. Uh, you won't see ads if you if you do that. But that's that gets expensive. That's over $100 US a year. Um, or if you subscribe to a channel, you won't see ads on that channel. But you will see them if you watch other streamers. So if you subscribe to a streamer, you won't get ads on their stream, but you will get ads if you watch anyone else's stream unless you subscribe to them as well. And that's because Twitch uh, want to double their advertising revenue, so <laughs> they're forcing everyone to watch ads. And there's been, been a big uproar about it because they're taking away something that they've given you in the past. Like it used to be ad-free if you had Prime or if you had Twitch Prime, uh, but they're taking that away. And it's the same thing that YouTube did when they took away monetization from partners. People don't like it when you take stuff away that they were getting for free, that they were paying for. They weren't getting for free, but that was included. So I want to, I just want to mention that because if you guys start to see ads on my channel, don't think that Phil is being a real B-A-S-T-A-R-D and running ads all the time. I have no control over the ads. Twitch do it. They have the control, not me. So don't blame me. It's Twitch. <laughs> I'm not running any ads. I don't run ads. Um, Beck says, I paid for Prime for a year using student. You can get student Prime, yeah. So it was like £25 and I get a year of Twitch subs, yeah. Look, you still get your free Twitch subs if, if you get Amazon Prime or uh, Twitch Prime. So that, that doesn't go away. You still get all the game loot if you want it. Uh, personally, I don't like any of the games that uh, Twitch give away, but hey, that's just me. So you still get all that good stuff. The only thing they're taking away is um, they're taking away the ad-free experience, so you have to watch ads. <laughs> and I don't know what, what the ads are like, but yeah. uh, Android Lust says, subscribe to Phil Does 3 and no ads on his channel. That's right. If you don't want to, if you don't want to be interrupted by ads on Twitch watching my, my stream, then sub to my channel and you will get no ads, plus a whole lot of other benefits that you'll find in my panels below my stream. Shameless plugs today, isn't it? I'm shameless. No, I, I, try, I, did, I try not to do that. But you are right, Android Lust. And you are a sub, so you won't get ads, Android Lust. Uh, Beck says, I used to be a sub for a month or two, but already used this month. Oh, that's okay, Beck. <laughs> but do keep that in mind, because a lot of people too, that are Twitch Prime, have Amazon Prime, I mean, don't realise they get a free sub to a Twitch channel. No, I'm not saying it's so you sub to me. I'm just saying, and a lot of people forget that. And and if you don't use it, you lose it. So you better, all, if you're a Prime member, to give that sub to a Twitch streamer because um, otherwise it just disappears every month. You get a new one every month, but if you don't use it, then it it's gone. And you could give that to a streamer and support a streamer. So 
But that would be my advice if you're an Amazon Prime member. And I'm not saying you do it to my channel, but any Twitch streamer, you should use your free sub. You're paying for it after all. Uh, Beck says, I'm poor now anyways. Uh, did work for someone in America and they never paid me. Oh, no. Wow. I hate hearing stories like that. Because it's so easy if you're an art, an artist doing contract work or you're doing any sort of contract work, uh, it can be easy to be ripped off. And that stinks. You know, you, you devote time and effort into creating something for someone with the expectation they're going to pay you for your time and effort and work and they end up not paying you, that stinks. It, it, it just, yeah. Yeah, that, that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that back. I really am. Because it really, it really angers me when people do that sort of stuff. That's why you've got to be incredibly careful. Um, if you do contract work, get part payment up front. That would be my advice. In that way, if they don't want to, at least you'll have part payment. Uh, so, you know, and I generally don't give the originals of the work that I create for a client until they've paid in full. So I get part payment up front before I start the work. Um, and then when I come, when it comes time to deliver the final product, if they want the original files, they don't get them until I get paid in full. Um, so yeah, but, but even then you, you're going to come across some people that just won't pay you. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I don't want to read that. Andrew Lust says, uh, sorry, man, Americans don't like paying people. I don't think that's true. I think there's people all over the world in every country that don't like paying. I don't think it's unique to America. Um, Beck says, uh, said he had 50K investor. I was owed 2K, saw nothing for months. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to say. My sympathies, Beck. I, I feel for you. I think it stinks. You put that time and work into it, in, into creating something for someone and they don't pay you. That's just, just stinks. But at least try and get part payment up front before you start a project. Some people don't like doing that. Well, in my, in my experience, if you, if you've got a client, who won't give you a part payment before you start the work, they're more likely to be the client that won't pay you for your work to begin with. So that that's my advice to people that do contract work. If the, if the person that you're doing the work for is not willing to give you a part part payment up front, uh, then they're not they're more likely not to pay you at all. So you, you're better off not doing the work for them. Now, some, it can be good to do work for free for people too if you want to put together a portfolio. I mean, I'm not suggesting you charge for everything if you don't, if, particularly if you're starting out. Um, you can offer to do work for free for people if you want because with the intention of putting that in your portfolio to build up your portfolio, that's a good way to build up a new portfolio if you're new to the game. But I'm not suggesting you do that too much because it's your time and effort and you should charge for the work you do. Uh, Beck says the team was like 14 people too so he messed up a lot of people yeah you get, I, I see that quite a lot in young studios that are making games games the games industry wow it seems to be really bad for that sort of thing I'm not, I don't want to tarnish the games industry I mean there's a lot of great games companies there really are but uh, people I don't think sometimes realise just how much work goes into making a game and they have this um, misguided idea of how quickly they can get something done or how much something's going to cost and they get into trouble. So they might not even have started out with the intention of ripping people off, uh, but they just, uh, once they get, once the project gets underway, they realise just how much work is involved and how much time and how much cost uh, comes with making a game. Or, or make any sort of large project, anyway. So, and I do, I see it quite a bit with um, people in the games industry, let's say, with smaller studio, studios, independent studios, behaving like that. And let's do a save all here because this camera is done. But uh, yeah, I do feel for you, Beck. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm sure things will be 
will pick up for you and you'll come you'll get a client that will pay you I'm sure Beck says it's the first time it's happened to me but yeah yeah it's going to happen to everyone that works that does contract work at one stage in, or another in their career that's just uh, that's just one of the pitfalls of doing contracting um, yeah I mean being a con- private contractor is great in a lot of ways because you can um, set your own hours you can do the work you want to work on not, not the stuff you're being told to work on so there's a, a lot of benefits to being a contractor but there's a lot of downsides as well um, just just keeping track of all your tax is a major pain because as an independent contractor you've got to um, you've got to keep a tight rein on your taxation otherwise you're going to be in trouble with the tax department and that can be a major pain in the ass and and, and, and really difficult to keep track of too if you paid like sort of uh, in lump sum payments sort of thing like you know maybe you get 20 grand from a client for doing a, a piece of work and you think oh Excellent. I have twenty thousand dollars. What am I going to spend my money on? Um, and forget that you've got to take out the taxation from that twenty grand, and put that aside in a separate account so that you don't spend it by mistake, because you've got to you've got to pay it to the taxation department. And that's where a lot of uh, contractors get into trouble. They they forget that, or well, if they don't forget it, they um they just end up spending the money by mistake anyway, and then they get a huge tax bill. Whereas if you work for someone, you get a steady wage, uh, you don't have that taxation worry because the company handles all that for you. Uh, superannuation, the company pays into your superannuation or your 401k or whatever you call it in the US. Uh, whereas if you're an independent contractor, you've got to take care of all that yourself. So you've got to sort of weigh up all these things when you decide whether you want to do contracting or, or you want to work for someone. And I do both. So, <laughs> which is um, good and bad as well. So I, I take on private contracts for people and I also work for a studio. So at least I'm guaranteed an income. That's what's important to me. And uh, doing the contracting work, I can pick up the projects I, I want to do and say no to the ones I don't. So Now, I, want, I need to set up a new camera where we leave this room and we go into the main dining room. Uh, Beck says, well, I do contract while at uni, okay, with UE4 stuff. Uh, after uni, hopefully a normal wage job, yeah. If you're new, if you're studying, doing contract work can be a great way to, to earn a bit of extra money while you study and to help build up your portfolio, which is what it's all about. Because when you come out of uni, you've got you to find a job. And when you go for an interview, they're going to look at your portfolio. Uh, so doing contract work while at university is a great way to build your portfolio up and to make a bit of extra money on the side. Uh, once you leave university, though, and find a job, my, my advice to new people going into the industry is to get a full-time job. Don't do contract work. Not initially. And you want the steady wage. You want the security of having a, a steady employment. Um, by all means, do contract work on the side as well as full-time work, but you may find that a bit hard because... You generally kept pretty busy at a studio, doing full-time work for a studio. Um, They keep you pretty busy. So you might find it difficult to do contract work as well as work full-time, at least initially. But my advice for a new new person entering the industry, try and find steady work in a studio. Don't, Don't try and do a contract work straight up. Uh, that, that's my suggestion. I mean, you know, you, you guys do what you want to do. It's your life. That, that would be my suggestion. Try and, try and find a, job, a, a steady job at a studio first and do contracting work on the side if you have the time. Yeah. And doing contracting at uni, though, that's, that's, that's a great way to build your portfolio up and earn some extra money because you're studying full-time as well or, you, or part-time or whatever it is. So do, doing it that way is fine. But once you've finished, once you've graduated, look for a full-time or look for steady employment at a studio. Okay, this next camera, I think. My stream turns into more of a chat show, I think, than it does anything else. I don't do enough work. Naughty Philip, naughty Philip, do more work. Um Another camera. Now, this camera, maybe we can get a shot of our, our sideboard here. 
because I want my sideboard in, in at least one camera shot. Because we need to take the, uh, we need a shot where we exit this building and we enter through into the dining room for one last time before we start to move into the um, central skylight hall section back there. So uh, for this, I think I want to use a rail. I want to use a camera rig rail, rail rig, rig rail. Uh, so I'm going to drag, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save all and then I'm going to set up a new shot. So let's, we're up to shot 51. Let's duplicate our empty shot. And we're calling it shot 51. Uh, Beck says, anyways, it's 2.30 a.m. I have a 7 a.m. start, uh, so I'm going to go. Uh, night chat, night well. Good night, Beck. You have a good night's sleep. Thanks for being here and for popping in, Beck. I'll be back live again Monday next week if you want to watch me before you get to bed. You have a great night's sleep, and, uh, yep, thanks for being here, Beck. Uh, so yes, we're going to we're going to set up a rail here. So let's pull in a camera rail rig. They call it a rig rail. I would call it a rail rig. I guess they're calling it a rig and it's a rail and then a rig and a crane. Anyway, <laughs> not that it's that important. It trips me up. That's all. Okay, uh, I'm going to drag this rail out. So let's um, start by doing that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to select the endpoint there, hold down the Alt key, and drag a new point out. And drag another one out. I don't think I need too many points. I'm not going to be um, curving this rail too much. It's going to be pretty much a straight rail. I'll do one more just to be on the safe side. Why not? You'll try to be here next Monday. We'll be in your new flat too. Whoa, who? Good to hear back. You have. To. Well, we look forward to hopefully seeing you next Monday. You have a great night's sleep, back, and good luck with the move. Okay, so this rail we are taking out the door, but I want to finish the rail up here by the chandelier. I want, to, I want a really tight shot of the chandelier again. I know we've got a couple of tight shots of the chandeliers already in the other camera shots. Um, but I think, uh, again, I, I think I'm a, I want a sort of a shot where the camera moves. I want to be looking back here because that's where the next camera is going to be. We're going to start, we're going to move into this back um, skylight section here. So... Uh, I want a shot where we see this central doorway. That's the whole point of this shot. Uh, but I thought it would be cool if we sort of brought our camera like really close to the chandelier for that for the, for the shot, almost like um, I sort of want yeah, sort of sort of like this. I, I want the chandelier to be partially obscuring the doorway that we're, we're, we're heading toward. So I want to finish my camera shot. Sort of like this, maybe not angled down so much like that, but maybe maybe up like this. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to lift the rail at the end here. And we're going to move the rail over. Just move this one up and over a little bit as well. We'll make uh, adjustments to this once we get the camera on there. Okay, now it looks like our rail got a bit twisted. There we go. I might just pull it up a little bit more so we get more of a gentle slope going up and not, not such a dramatic move up. But we can fine tune this once we get the camera on the rail, which is what we're going to do right now. So 
Um, I'm just going to make sure this is not quite, I just want to make a nice smooth sort of curve going through here. That's better. Okay, let's uh, let, let's rename the camera rig here so I, the rail so I can find it easily when I want to attach my cinematic camera. So I'm going to call this um, Z A Z A Z A. Let's see where that is here. That's right there. Let me just pull this. Um, <laughs> come on. Pull this down. Let's get back into our room. There we go. Uh, let's add a cinematic camera. And let's attach it to that rail. That's how I like to name my stuff. <laughs> It's really not important what these names are for our rails and rigs. I mean, it can be. If, if I want to be really um, accurate and correct, I should be naming them probably in the room that they're attached to. Like, I should call this one uh, Front Hall Rail 3 sort of thing. That's, the, that's a better way to go. Uh, but for the sake of what we're doing, this will be fine. I just do it so it makes it easy for me to attach the camera to the rail to the to the rail uh, without having to spend half an hour going through all these rails to find the one that I want. Okay, let's let's move our camera up. Android Lust says, "Yeah, to be honest, I name it like that when I'm tired." <laughs> yeah, it, it's a bad bad habit to get into. I don't suggest you do this sort of naming convention. Um. I have a habit of doing that in Photoshop when I'm doing layering work in Photoshop. So I've got like 30, 40 different layers in a file. I have a habit of doing this and, but I always make sure at the end of, before I do a, a save for the day, I go back and I rename them what they are to just describe what they are. Um, but initially I don't worry about doing that. It's a good habit to do it though. It's, it's, it's proper workflow is to name your things correctly. It will make your life 10 times more easy in the, if you have to come back and do any revisions or if you're passing on what you're working on to other people. This will drive people insane. They won't like this and they will bitch and bitch and bitch with good reason. If, I, if somebody gave me a file that had Z-A-Z-A-Z-A -Z -A -Z -A to work with, I would not be happy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my advice is don't do what I do here. Try not to anyway particularly if you're giving stuff that other people are going to work on, try and name everything properly. <laughs> Alrighty, let's, um, let's add our camera and our rail to our new shot track. Android just says, for rigging, it's important to name stuff. It is important in rigging, yeah, to name stuff right, so I can't be lazy on that. Yeah, no, rigging, rigging a character is incredibly important to name everything correctly. You're going to run into all sorts of problems if you don't. Okay, let's turn the camera on here so we can see what the camera is seeing. Okay, so we I know that I want to start my camera looking at that chest of drawers because that was the whole point of the camera. All right. Now, our camera is too close to the chest of drawers. We have a couple of things we can do. We can move the camera back or we can move the rail back. And I think I'm going to move the rail back. It's going to have to come back quite a way. Let's move this one so that, that we don't have that huge um, curve going on. 
Again, I'm just rotating it so that curve is unkinked a little bit. And I think I may need to move the rail back a little bit more. I'm going to move the curve here so it's not quite such a uh, such a, a rapid turn. Once rotated, to move to get rid of that kink again. Okay, first thing we need to do is we need to change to an 18 millimeter camera lens. Let me pull this back up again so I can see what I'm doing. To give us a nice letterbox look. Now we can make some adjustments to our camera. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera over the rail a bit more. I'm going to rotate the camera up. I think I might have rotated it just a bit too much. Just1771, thank you for the follow. I don't know why uh, my chat client has not showed, shown me that, but um, my Discord has. Oh, there we go. It's just a bit slow. Thank you, Just1771, for following me on Pildos 3D. I do appreciate it when you guys follow me, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, let's just angle this camera. Let's straighten up our camera a little bit here. Okay, and, and the whole reason I've got the camera here is because I wanted to see that, that sideboard. It's not, the whole point of this shot is so I can see my sideboard. It's only going to be in shot for a second, if that. Um, but let's set a keyframe here for our camera. Press S on the keyboard. Now let's also change the, the rail rig so it, the camera moves along as we start making adjustments to the camera itself. So. I'm going to choose the rail. At the beginning here, I'm going to make sure I set a keyframe for its zero position on the rail. Come on. There we go. Uh, let's move to the end and set the rail to one so that the camera moves to the end of the rail. And set a keyframe. And now we can start making some adjustments to the camera as we go. So a camera comes along comes along. When we get to about here, probably probably about here, basically where just before the top of the candelabra disappears, uh, I'm going to rotate my camera. So we're starting to face the door. Let's set a keyframe there. Let's keep moving along our timeline. Rotate our camera. So we're looking through the doorway. About the middle, I guess. Let's set a keyframe there. Keep moving our camera. going to move it to the end of the timeline and I'm going to move my rail. Let me just um, get into our dining room. Okay. 
Alrighty, so I'm going to move my rail over. I want my camera a little bit closer to the um, chandelier. So let's move the rail over until we see the chandelier. Let's move it back because it's too close. We need to move it over. Uh, let's see, let's move it down. I'll fix this in a minute. I know my, my track's looking a bit mangled here at the moment. In fact, I'm just going to move this back quickly. There we go. Back to the end of our rail. Uh, now, again, I'm looking over here in the left while I move the track over here because I'm interested in what the camera sees. So, maybe move it back. Let's move it over a little bit. No, you're going the wrong way. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get into a bit, better position where I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so, yeah, remember we wanted to keep focus on the doorway, but I wanted to see a bit of the chandelier here as well. Okay, so... Just, just moving it to see what, how high or how low I want to take the camera, and I think, I, I think a shot here where we see a bit of the um of the banister might be cool. Let me pull the camera forward, pull it up a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe pull it back. That might be cool. The, the chandelier is partly obscuring the doorway, but the focus is the doorway. We see a bit of the um, banister still here, which is good. And look at my mangled track. Let's move the track back here. There we go. It's a bit better. I want a bit more of a gentle slope going up, so I'm going to pull the track down. Much more gentle, even rise up. And I'm just going to make sure my track isn't skewed at all. Just smoothed it out a little bit more by rotating it. Um, okay, so we're at the end of our timeline. Let's choose our camera and add a keyframe for the end here. Now let's scrub through our timeline and make any small adjustments we might need. Okay, so we start on the chest of drawers, the camera moves forward. Uh, the camera turns as we move through the doorway. Just, just want to have a look at how the camera is moving before it gets to the door. I think what I might do is I might move the, tr the rail over just a little bit here. Let me just scrub through the timeline again and have a look. 
So it turns to face the door. I was just trying to work out whether the door going off centre there is okay or not. Like the camera moves and the doorway sort of is not kept dead centre, uh, which can be interesting because it can make things look a little bit less precise, a little bit more natural. I'm just going to have a look at where the cam... I'm going to turn um, unlit on so I can see what's going on a little bit more easily. Okay, it looks like... Looks like I might just rotate this point a little bit just so our rail doesn't actually go through the floor. It doesn't me matter, but it meant that our camera would have been angling down a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure the rail was actually sitting above the floor. Uh, and you can see here, as our camera goes through, the rail actually is not dead center, which is okay because our camera is not dead center. So that's not a problem. Our camera passes through the doorway, through the actual door though, as you can see here. If I get in a bit closer, we can get a better look. So that's that's our camera there. And as it's passing through the doorway, it's passing through the door, which is what we're seeing here. Uh, so that's not great. So I think the easiest way for us to fix that will be just to move the track over a little bit, like that. We don't have to keyframe anything, we're actually moving the track. So if I scrub back through the timeline, we turn, we go through the doorway, and we finish beside the uh, chandelier. I'm just going to play that through on a loop a couple of times. I'm just deciding if I want to lift the track at the beginning or not, like raise the, the height of the camera. It's probably not necessary. I could raise it as it gets to the doorway. But I think it's, it's more interesting get, coming from a low height, going up to a higher height towards the chandelier. I think that that adds more interest than just keeping it the same height all the way through. See here we're lower and as it gets towards the chandelier it moves up over the banister. It adds more interest, Android Lust says. Yeah, I, I think it does too. I mean, we could keep the camera, like I said, the same height all the way through the movement. But starting it lower, and, and as the camera moves, the camera starts to move higher. I think, like you say, adds more visual interest. It gives the, um, the room more of a 3D look too. Like you can see, uh, calling it a 3D look is not correct, but it... it, it it makes the room look more three-dimensional because you can see the banister as we tra as the camera travels over the banister. Uh, 
yeah, probably not explaining it correctly, but you, you can see what I mean. It gives it a more three-dimensional look by going up over the banister instead of just going straight over the banister. And the banister, I mean, by banister, I mean the, the railing that is in the centre of the room. Okay, th th I think that's okay. Let's do a save all, but let's um, let's look at our depth of field. So, let's start at the beginning. Let's turn on. No, 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 no. Did I turn? Yeah, I did. Eighteen millimeter. That's cool. Let's select our camera. Let's turn on the focus distance and let's pull it in and start pushing it back. So 100 too close, 300 still too close, 600 getting there but still too close, 1000 getting there but it's cutting half of the um, of that unit so let's push it back a bit further. Let's try 1100. That's better, but the background there should not really be out of focus because it's so close to the uh, candelabra and that um, sideboard. So let's go 1200. Let's try 1300. And that's better. We want, to, we want everything here to be in focus. So let's set a keyframe here. I'm also going to make sure I turn on smooth focus change. Let's start moving through our timeline. We can see in the background the purple, that's where the depth of field is at the moment. And that's not too bad. Until we get to here, I'm going to push the depth of field back a bit here. So let's, uh, let's try 1500. That's better because I want all of the chandelier and all of this banister in, sh in focus, but the background wall there can be slightly out of focus at this distance. So let's set a keyframe here. Let's keep traveling forward. Um, I think hmm. where it ends here is not too bad. I'm just, I just think when we get to about here, we should push it back beyond that wall, beyond this wall here. So I might push it back to, let's try 1600, let's try 1700. Let's try 1800. That's better. I, I want to push back beyond the wall here. So let's set a keyframe there. And now we should be good for the last one. And we'll set a keyframe at 1800. In fact, we'll, we'll go to 2000 here. Push it back just a little bit more and set a keyframe. I'm going to turn off um, that purple haze so we can get a better look. So, this is all in focus. Our camera travels through our doorway. You can see the line there is slightly out of focus. The foreground is more in focus. Might be harder for you guys to make out on stream. Uh, here though, you can see it probably a bit better. The line's a little out of focus, the back wall. The chandelier is completely in focus as well as the uh, banister. And as we move forward, the line will come more into focus. And the back wall there is a little out of focus, back behind the doorway there. But these walls are all in focus. Again, I'm just going to play it through on a loop.
No, I think that's okay. I don't think it's too bad. Just excuse me for two seconds, guys. Yeah, no, I think that'll be okay. Um, let's pause that and do a save all. I guess that's it for this front part of the room. We can move into the um, into the central hallway section now with the skylight. So now we've got to set up some cameras for this part of the building. I think uh, initially we should set a camera up that's like uh, an overview sort of shot. So, so um, 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 maybe a camera where we're looking back towards that doorway. Again, it lets people know where they are in relation to the building. They'll recognize that doorway from the, the room we were just in here. So if we set up like a, a shot where we're looking back towards that doorway, it could be cool. It gives us a chance to show up our banners as well because their cloth physics, they'll move in the, in the breeze. So. And that's always a good thing to show up. Hambone, hey Hambone, good to see you. How are you? It's good to see you, Hambone. How are you? I liked your tweet um, yesterday or the day before about uh, having a lie down after having a good pee. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. You are very funny, Hambone. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, guys and girls, check out Hambone's Twitter. <laughs> uh, what are you sorry for? It was funny. You got a like from me. On, on Twitter. I liked it. That was very good. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so we're setting up a shot where we're looking back towards that doorway from our last shot here. So we just got to find a spot where we um, we get into an angle we like. Now, we do have some nice guard rays coming through this window. But unfortunately, I don't think we can really see those unless we angle our camera more like this, which is in the opposite direction from what we want. So we'll get another shot of that um those god rays in that window, but we want a shot at this stage of of our doorway and our banner, banners up there above the door and our painting, of course, this nice Turner painting. Okay. Yeah, so um, first things first, we make sure we did a save all. Wait for that to save. Good. Um, let's create a new camera. Let's create a new empty shot track first. That's so shot 52. 52. We are almost there though. We're, we're heading right towards the back of the building now. So we're almost, almost, almost there. We're three quarters of the way through the building. <laughs> Let's open up our new empty shot track. Um, now I have to decide if I want to, I'm just going to deselect that to get rid of that uh, camera there in the corner. Um, whether I want to move the camera at all, if I just want a, a steady shot. We, I don't know. Hambone says, uh, it looks so nice. Thanks Hambone, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Difficult to see, but like I said, because everything is animated. So the flags, are, the, the banners are animated. Uh, the plants are all animated in the wind and that sort of stuff. So it adds a bit more life once it's actually going, which we'll see in the cinematic. Um, so we're just going to decide how I want to, what I want to do with this camera. Um, First things first, let's add a camera. So I'm just going to pull up here so I know where to put my camera. Um, 
Let's just add the camera. Move it up. Handbone says, could never afford a place like that. Neither could I. You and me both, Handbone. Uh, I would love to own a house like this, but I'm, I, I could never afford it either. But that's why I, I do it in 3D. I don't have to I don't have to afford it. I can just make it. And I can pretend. Nothing wrong with a bit of pretending. I'm just gonna add that camera to our shot track here. Uh Handbone says, but you're a famous Twitch streamer. Yeah, that's right. I'm a real famous Twitch streamer. <laughs> Um, Hambone says, I thought you would own four of them by now. No, if only. If only. No, 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 no. No, no, no. My mortgage keeps me broke in the apartment I'm living in now. <laughs> uh, but yes, like I said, that's that's the whole advantage of um, doing, creating it yourself. If you can't afford it, at least you can pretend by creating it. You can pretend. There's nothing wrong with a bit of pretending. Well, people call it being delusional, I don't know. What's wrong with being a bit delusional as well? Uh, Hambone says, I have a good job and I'm still broke as hell. Well, so do I, and I'm always broke as well, Hambone. I've joined the club. Uh, Hambone says, uh, I can 3D model me a hot babe. You can. You, you can. you can live that dream if you want. You can model as hot a babe as you want. And you can you can pretend. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever makes you happy. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of, de bit of delusion. is ne never, never a bad thing. You know? Better being a bit delusional than crying. <laughs> um, this is what the camera is seeing at the moment. So I think what I want to do with this is I want to rotate the camera up a little. because I really want to see the, banner, the banners. That's the whole point of this shot, is to see these banners. It's to see this doorway, but also to see these banners. Uh, and the rug in the corner here, of course, is cloth physics as well, so it'll move a little bit. Um, the handbane says, Polly's the limit. That's right, Polly is, there is no limit. Uh, I have worked so much the past couple of days, not much sleep, pretty sure I'm losing it a bit. <laughs> well, good to hear you're doing a lot of work, handbane. I'm a firm believer in, you know, putting the work in. That's not, never a problem. Don't make yourself sick, though. <laughs> what are you working on, Hambone? Are you doing... What, what are you doing? Or, or you, is this work work, not 3D work or, or programming work? Okay, I'm just moving my camera back here. Work, work, oh, okay, okay, work, work, oh, not, not so much fun then. Software engineer, oh, okay, yeah, a friend of mine is a software engineer as well. You guys are in demand, at least he's in demand, My this friend of mine, he's in huge, huge demand. <laughs> Everybody wants a software engineer, particularly if they know anything about AI and um, or cryptography. It's all the rage at the moment. That, of course, is not me. <laughs> I know, I know, I know a smattering of programming, but um, I'm not a software engineer by any means. <laughs> I see Nightbot spamming my links again. Um, this shot, this shot, this shot. I, 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 I might rotate the camera a little bit as well. Maybe. Maybe at a bit of an angle. In fact, let's move the camera in toward the wall a little bit.
that's the plant we're seeing here in the in the shot so I might have to move it forward a little look at look at nightbot look what it's doing it can look it has got a mind of its own I don't know what's going on with the timers on nightbot man I swear to God it's got a mind of its own though you can, we, we can go lines and lines and lines of chat without it popping up at all and then all of a sudden it starts spamming my links. Naughty, naughty little bot. Um, I'm just trying to get my camera into position here that I like the angle of. Maybe something like that. I, I don't want I don't want it to be straight on like that. That's a boring looking shot. It's always more interesting if it's sort of like an off center shot. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit of the rug though. Maybe like that. I'm trying to keep this banister here, this uh, decorative piece on the banister in shot, but I wanted to see a little bit of the rug over here. So that's sort of like what I'm trying to do here. That's better. Um, now height wise, um, how am I going to do this shot? We could do a shot where we just move the camera straight up. That could be cool. So we could start the camera low and just move it up. Let's 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 look at doing that. So if I move the camera down to where I want to start it, maybe around about around about mm, maybe that's a bit low. Uh, uh, I'm getting some. I'm getting a bit of the plant by the look of it coming through the camera here. So I think I might need to move it forward a bit. Because I moved it forward, now I'm losing a bit of the edge of my banister, so I'm going to have to move it out a little bit. There we go. So if, I'm, if I start the camera... I don't want to start it too low, because I'm just worried there's too much brown in shot with the, with the railings, so uh, I, I want to move it up so we don't... We, have a bit less of the railing in shot, maybe like, maybe like, maybe like, maybe like that. Let's set a keyframe here. So S on the keyboard. Let's move to the end of our timeline. Let's move our camera up. I'm just going to get into position where I can see it here. And we'll move our camera up. I don't want to move it. I don't want to see the plant there in the corner, so I'm going to stop it before we get up that high. Up to here, and I'm going to rotate the camera down a little bit. I still want to catch a bit of our banners, so I don't want to to lose them. Just making sure we're lined up straight. Let's set a keyframe here. And if I scrub through my timeline, it's not, not as nice a shot as I was hoping. It's just doing a roll on the camera. I don't really like that. I think... Um, you got to shoot all. Whoa, look at the time. I should, I, we might call it a day there actually, guys. Uh, we will pick this up again. Let's do a save all on Monday next week when I come back. Um, I do want to thank you guys and girls though very much for being here and for hanging out with me. I'll be back on Monday next week is when I'm live again, 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. Remember, if you're not sure, look for that graphic down below my stream. It's a countdown to when I'm, I'm live next. 
uh, apart from the premiere streams. It counts down to that as well. But I'll be back live on Monday next week. Remember to join the Discord server if you haven't already by clicking that blue graphic in my panels. And you can follow me on Twitter at PhilDoes3D because I always post when I go live. But I'll be back again on Monday next week and we'll pick up where we left off. You guys and girls have a great weekend. Thank you again for being here and for watching. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you guys and girls on Monday next week. Take care, guys.